everybody else. So, what did I get, Pat? What's music? Of course, and I can, it's this huge space that I can walk right over here in case I need to, and this bit here, and this bit here. I'm going to work some dancing into my act probably, later, maybe. Anyway, uh, yeah, so as you heard, uh, my name is Stuart, or uh, as you like to say in America, Steve, um, and I am from England, um, or as you also like to say in America, oh, yeah, yeah, I know England, my buddy Dave flew over it in an airplane once. You probably know who he is. Which, you know, actually on that occasion, I did know who this guy was. But the point, of, the point I was trying to make is that there's this assumption that England's just so teeny, teeny, tiny that everybody knows who everybody else is. Uh, hello, Frodo Baggins of the Shire. <laughs> You're late. No, is it is never late. Nor is he early. He's precisely on time. Watch out for the dragon! <laughs> yeah, it's a weird conversation, but they're strangers. Because, like I said, I mean, although I say we don't know everybody, we, yes, we are related to everybody else. Because the Queen is the mother to one and all. Even me? Yes, Tiny Tim. Even you. <laughs> it's just that we don't know each other. That's the thing, that's what I was trying to make. Um, except for that Dave guy, uh, you probably know him. But yeah, although he was American, so probably you know him, Dave, right? No? Anybody know Dave? No? Anyway. Um, if you had met Dave, you may not have known him either, because uh, when he first came back from England, he had that whole accent thing they picked up from England. Like, Hello, mate. Would you like some fish and chips? Would you like a cup of tea? We can watch Mary Poopins. That's your book, Gallifreyanistic. Sorry, I just had to sing that because that song's obviously uh, the national anthem of England. So it just gets me all nostalgic when I hear it. But uh, yeah, so uh, let's. Um, oh no. Going with that one. Uh, oh, but uh, of course I was going to this place. Uh, it's funny how you know the uh, the American accent or the English accent that my all, all my American friends try is some sort of cliched version done by an American in a Disney film that's 50 years old. But uh, it's not so surprising really because you know ultimately it's not that far away from the cliched view that the English have of all Americans, which is you know loud. You live in New York or somewhere close by, like Dallas or Seattle. Um, you wear a cowboy hat all the time, um, a Hawaiian shirt also, that's the uniform. You only ever eat in your car, uh, you only ever eat at McDonald's. Uh, chances are your name's Chuck or Brad or Wendy. Um, you play American football or you're a cheerleader. Don't want to get gender specific there, could be either which way. Um, and you fly the flag everywhere you go, so that's good. Oh, and of course you have that funny accent, that sort of, uh, Hello, mate! Would you like to get some fish and chips? Would you like a cup of tea? We can watch Mary Poopins. <laughs> okay, <I'm a> <laughs> anyway, uh, so, uh, but you know, the funny thing is the accent does get uh, misinterpreted from time to time. When I first moved here, I thought, well, I speak the language, so it's not going to be too difficult being understood. But I did find myself having to repeat my thing, you know, what I was trying to get across several times. It'd be like, what's that, Steve? You're calling from the car park because you've left some aluminium in the lift. <laughs> a while to get that but uh, the uh, and, you know uh, the, the, another thing comes to this one like uh, with the accent sometimes when I'm uh, dating American girls because fortunately for me uh, a lot of American women from time to time decide they want to date an English guy probably because uh, you know <laughs> we're ridiculously handsome with a really sexy voice <laughs> another summer day has come and gone away in Paris and Rome but I want to go home. Mm. So, yeah, obviously, anybody want to catch me afterwards? <laughs> but, you know, dating American women, uh, the, the trouble is it's a bit like Michael Bublé. Sometimes you'll say one thing and they'll hear another and that sort of breaks down the communication a little bit. So, 
for argument's sake, if I see a nice girl that I like the look of, I'll walk up and say, hi, my name's Stuart, what's your name? What she'll hear is, "'Tis thy name that is my enemy, for thou art not Steve, and thou art not a man, but a heart in need of companionship." I don't know what that means. I don't want to say to her when she says that. Or I'll say something, we'll get into a conversation, and I'll say, oh, yeah, you know, my dad, yeah, he, uh, he worked as a janitor at Heathrow Airport for 40 years. What she'll hear is, oh, my father, yes, the Earl of England. Oh, yes, yes, yes. But is it fifth in line to the throne? And uh, he owns British Airways and the sunny part of Southern Europe. So uh, holidays are super jolly fun. You should just come along. <laughs> I can't do that for um, And then, oh, you know, uh, finally, maybe the, the relationship isn't working out, probably for communication reasons, but, uh, you know, or maybe I want to end it with her and I'll say, look, the last few months have been great, but I just don't think we're going to really make it. Uh, it's not you, it's me. What she'll hear is, I'm going to be the Queen of England. <laughs> <laughs> big disappointment, obviously, when, uh, when that doesn't turn out. Um, but truth is, if we did get that far, um, that would be um, in her cards because another thing about coming from England is that as soon as you're born there, you're automatically in line to the throne. So that, that's that's great for everyone who's born in England. For me personally, I am 37 million 856 487 in line to the throne. Um, yeah, so that's that's coming up right around the corner. Um, in fact, I, you know, I did the math on that. Um, if you uh, Apparently there's 2,000 deaths a day in Britain. Um, sad thought, I know, but stick with me, there's a happy ending. Um, what that means is that I am 18,940 days or 52 years from becoming the king. <laughs> All right. And don't think this is going to catch me by surprise because I've been preparing for it already. I, uh, I've already sorted out the crown. Um, it's, it's, it's rather large, it's got a big S on it, so that... Uh, for Steve. I, for Steve, for Steve. Uh, <laughs> King Steve, <laughs> but not just yet. But, um, so I'll know it's mine, and then there'll be a, there's a teacup here and a teapot there, just so you know it's from England, um, in case you're thirsty as well. In the middle, there's this little area, uh, it's like a box or a cage sort of thing. It could take general storage, but it'll also house a small pet if yeah. needed. So, um, and then of course it has a visor, so I can wear it when it's sunny. So that's, that's something I'm, I'm really looking forward to. And also, um, that's not the only thing I've been pe preparing my car. I drive a uh, 1994 Ford Pro GT, obviously. Uh, yeah, right, for, for a kingness. And so what I did is it's a hatchback, so I cut out the back and uh, I put this sort of platform in there, and then there's this railing that goes along um, so that I can stand up and, and see all my subjects when I'm driving around. Um, and I've put this sort of big plastic dome over the top, um, you know, just for protection. Um, I mean, it's not bulletproof. There's no guns in England. No need for that. No one carries any guns. But, you know, I mean, if you really wanted to attack me, you could throw something, throw something at it, something like heavy, you know, like a, like a baby's head or something, you know. I mean, you wouldn't throw a baby's head. It was an analogy for size and weight. But if you were to throw that really hard, that might crack it. But you wouldn't, because I'm your king. Um, you probably just want to sort of say, Hey, King Steve, we love your trousers. He said, Kiss my child, bless this child. Um, but obviously that's a long way away. Um, I, right now I'm having a lot of fun li uh, living in America. It's a great place. I've been here for 10 years. Um, but uh, sometimes when I go home after being here for 10 years, my friends also say to me, oh, you know, you sound so American, you've got that sort of strange voice. Um, and they say to me, you know, hello, mate. Can I get some fish and chips? Would you like a cup of tea? We can watch Mary Poppins. <laughs> Super Gallifredialistic. <laughs> Thank you very much, my name's Good night. Keep it going for a steward.